First, Joe Biden will send troops to Eastern Europe amid an escalating crisis in Ukraine. The U.S. president is keeping up the pressure on Vladimir Putin, saying he'll bolster the NATO presence in the region. Tensions are running high there as Moscow has amassed more than 100,000 troops at Ukraine's border. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has urged Western leaders to avoid stirring panic. Now, for more on developments there, I'm joined by our international affairs editor, Douglas Herbert. Hi, Doug. How are you? Now, when it comes to the international responses to the situation between Let's, for example, take the U.S. and France. We've seen visible dialogue between uh, President Macron and President Putin where there's something a little bit more hostile from uh, Joe Biden. Uh, you can say that and underline it. Uh, the, you know, the U.S. is practically on a war footing right now uh, in the sense that, you know, there's that promise of planning to dispatch 8,500 uh, troops to Eastern Europe, not to Ukraine itself. Uh, you know, the Washington Post in the U.S. Uh, reported that, you know, the Russians have moved blood supplies close to the border, uh, which, you know, presumably because they would need it to treat casualties in the event of, uh, of some sort of uh, action or, or invasion. You know, there's a real in the U.S. right now. It has become the rhetoric very bellicose. Uh, and there's been part of it is political. Uh, there's been a real hue and cry, if you will, in the, among the political classes in the U.S., mostly Republicans, but also a lot of hawks among the Democrats calling for a tough line against Putin, getting ready to show that the U.S. can stand tough and take action in defense of its allies, in this case, Ukraine, um, and also facing off against this isolationist wing of the, of the, the real Trumpists in America who don't want to get involved in anything. They say America would be better off serving, staying at home, protecting its own borders from the invasion of immigrants from, from Mexico. So you could see where this whole political dynamic plays out. Um, but Biden's sort of caught in the middle. I don't believe it's to wag the dog scenario where he just wants to, you know, any military action foreign intervention boosts a politician politically, gains a few points. I don't think he's that cynical. Some politicians are. I think that he honestly despises Vladimir Putin. He honestly thinks Vladimir Putin has absolutely zero good intentions, and he wants to show that NATO can stand strong against a man who's become more and more, in his view, authoritarian and dictatorial, and he wants to defend the territorial so and, and sovereignty of, uh, of Ukraine. Macron, it's not that he's breaking ranks with the allies. He keeps reiterating he is obviously uh, wanting to stand in, in, in defense of, uh, of Ukraine's uh, integrity, territorial, its sovereignty, all of that. But he doesn't like what he sees as Europe being one sidelined in a lot of these talks which have been between Russia and the U.S. He wants Europe, and this is his big theme, not just on Ukraine but of his presidency, Europe should have a voice at the table. And he and Germany, so he and Olaf Scholz, the German chan chancellor, have really been pushing this parallel track of trying to have dialogue with Russia, dialogue to the end. So he's not in favor of this bellicose rhetoric that you see right now. He's trying to restart the so-called uh, Normandy talks between Russia and Ukraine and Germany and France around the original conflict back in the annexation of Crimea. And he also wants to get uh, parallel negotiations on track between the Russians and the Europeans and the Russians and the U.S. So it's not that he's turning his back on Biden, but he's trying to at least show that there is an alternate course. You don't have to beat the drums of war and rush off. Mm, a different approach there. And speaking of Russia, uh, as you did, where does all of this leave Putin? Does he appear to be scared of NATO? No, Putin isn't really scared of NATO at all. I mean, look, the troops we're talking about are a few thousand. Um, I think, you know, what, what Putin is really trying to do, you could say that he has a lot of the cards right now. And, and in a sense, he's already won. He doesn't have to invade Ukraine. He's sowed enough un uncertainty. He's created enough confusion. Um, you know, some in some areas, you know, semi-panic. And he's created this, here I am talking about it, right? We're all headlining with imminent invasion possible, U.S. intelligence reports. He has NATO, he has Europe and the U.S. where he wants them. Everyone is sort of in, invoking these panic-stricken uh, scenarios. He's done, he continues to do basically what he's done for the past eight years. That is so enough confusion, not just in Ukraine, where everyone's always a little off guard, not quite knowing what's going on, but we've seen it in Belarus, we've seen it in Armenia, we've seen it recently in Kazakhstan. It's not that he can just march in and recreate the Soviet empire uh, and resurrect all of that, but he is able to create just enough confusion and uncertainty that he's able to maintain a sort of status quo of his sphere of influence that has been in jeopardy since the end of the Cold War. And meanwhile, Zelensky's caught in the middle of all this, the Ukrainian mm. president. He's, he's sitting there assailing, basically, a lot of the Western partners for panic, modern, inciting panic as he sees it among his population. Indeed. And, and of course, uh, given that that's uh, those developments, the feeling in Kiev must be reasonably vulnerable. Yeah, he says, look, he says he's grateful for the U.S. support. He's not trying to sound like an ingrate, but he's saying, come on, guys, look at this. 
I'm the Ukrainian president. I'm located here in Ukraine. We're on the front lines of any potential imminent attack. We are not panicked. We're not running, for, you know, for, for the exits here. Uh, just calm down. The, the, the fact from Zelensky is he sees that we've been living in this for this with this for eight years. You're just all sort of noticing it now. The Russians have been doing this for months and years, since 2014, essentially. We're used to this. This is life as usual. Let's not overblow it. Let's not blow this thing out of proportion. So it's a very difficult act right now. Zelensky doesn't want to alienate the West, and at the same time, he is obviously wary of Vladimir Putin. He just doesn't think an invasion is imminent, and neither do most Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Doug Herbert, there on the situation between Russia and Ukraine.